Cool. Um, I well, I'm you'll hear this a lot today, but I've absolutely loved the series. I thought it was just so so brilliant. I'm going to start with you, Asif. Um, in regards to the conception of this project, were you always aware that 1971 as a year had this kind of place in musical history, or was it only really upon kind of research that you kind of realised that hang on, there's so much to come out of this particular year? I mean, you know, we we all know that kind of imagine and what's going on is kind of famously both from 71, but that's just the start, isn't it? Uh, I have to be honest, I did not know. I, I'm one of those people. I'm like the, one of the audience. I came along when James Gay Reese found a book and, and mentioned it and introduced me to it. Then I remember very clearly seeing the list of artists and list of albums that were created that year. I was born the following year, so I was born in 72. So, so I knew a lot of the music, have a lot of the music, but had no idea it all came out this incredible 12-month period. And James uh, Gay Reese, there's so many brilliant uh, musicians that feature in this series and some great archive footage. But those John Lennon interviews, those uh, candid interviews I've never sort of seen before, how did you encounter and sort of come across that footage? We had an amazing uh, archive team that basically, you know, I mean, this is a very long project. We were on it for years. So, um, you know, we, the archive team, I think, they only finished, I think they only finished working about five o'clock yesterday, to be honest with you. you know, it's been going on for so long. So... You know, I couldn't. I can't remember precisely where that came from because there were so many thousands of clips that came in. But the archive team just worked day and night for years to find this material. They did such an incredible job. And James Rogan, I was wondering because I mean, what struck me was not how much was not so much how the politics and society impacted the music, but more how the kind of music music impacted politics and society. Um, I mean, no, there are obviously so many comparisons to be made between then and now. Do you think it's fair to say that music hasn't got that same power anymore? Or perhaps it does, but the talent is lacking? I mean, because I was just watching this, and it's hard not to feel like music is less important nowadays. I think there's still amazing music being made. But that was a very specific moment in which music really was kind of like a newspaper for young people. It was the it became the predominant form of expression. And in a time of huge, huge tension, it was the way to get a message out quickly. They could, you know, John Lennon was writing songs which he would call newspaper songs, where he was writing a song quite quickly and putting it out quite quickly. So it felt like it was responding to a moment. And that's that's what made it so special. Yeah, as if I was wondering too, sort of on that note, sort of thinking back to this era, sort of off the back of rock and roll and folk music and soul, then moving into Motown and into disco, it felt like, I mean, had I been alive then, I'd have witnessed this kind of birth of so many styles. And then obviously a few years later came punk. And what an incredible thing to say, to be able to sit back and think, God, I've never heard anything like that before. Do you think it's a fair comment to say that those who were raised in the kind of 90s and 2000s, like myself, have been less fortunate in that regard, lacking that sense of something new, something kind of being being born? It's a really interesting question because, you know, the 80s, which I was born in the early 70s, so in the 80s, I remember being particularly shallow, it felt like, kind of film-wise or culturally. But, but I think what I hope is this series is the kind of excuse or the motivation to say we should be talking about what's going on. We should be doing something for the artists now, for the filmmakers, for the journalists to th realise that it is important for everyone to speak up and to do something and create so I would put it that way. It's really hard to look back and say, you know, because like maybe in 20 years' time, people will look at the 90s and say the 90s were an amazing golden age of music. Right now, it may not feel like it. It may have been in hip-hop, I'd say, for example. You know, it depended on the genre. The thing about 71 is every single genre of music and every single artist seemed to make something that year and were motivating one another, inspiring one another, and listening to one another, rather than kind of arguing with one another, you know, or having beef or something. I think that's what's interesting about that moment in time. James Gay Reese, I was going to ask too. I mean, obviously, this is very much about music, and you, it, is, it will go under the kind of the umbrella of being a music doc. But it's obviously about so much more than that, isn't it? I mean, was part of the kind of uh, idea behind this and the joy in bringing this to the screen was to use the kind of musical landscape as a catalyst to actually explore so much about life and society about from the era being depicted. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what we didn't want to do was make a traditional music documentary like behind the music. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't going to be a guy sitting on a mixing desk telling us how they made a record. We wanted to, because the, the music warrants that kind of investigation whereby, you know, the, the two-way conversation between society and music, and um, as Asif said, using it as like a call to arms to contemporary music in a way to say, you know, can be done, you can move the, move the needle with music if you, you know, if you mean it badly enough. And, um, you know, listen, it's just a gift. It's one of those projects that comes along once in a lifetime when it all comes together. And as, as Asif said earlier, 
the deeper we went into the project, the more relevant it felt. Do you know what I mean? So it was kind of the, our contemporary moment was catching up with the series almost, which is an extraordinary feeling. Yeah, because yeah, uh, James, I was going to ask too. I mean, obviously, uh, James Rogan, I should say, there's such a wealth of fascinating archive footage has obviously been discussed. Was there one performance or one interview or something that you, you remember sort of finding or stumbling across and just feeling the most kind of excited about? Well, I felt really excited about the way Aretha Franklin went through 71 interacting with the events. The, 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 the fact that she had offered bail for Angela Davis and the fact that she staged a concert for the, the families of the prisoners who were affected by the Attica riots. That whole, that whole the footage there was just, was just mind blowing. My final question, as if I was going to come to you, I mean, you've obviously created, when it comes to movies, these kind of iconic documentaries now that work as portraits of individual lives, obviously Senna, Amy, Maradona, all these kind of, uh, sort of one named people, or you know, that take a profound look into the world of someone special. I just wonder if this is an area you want to explore further. And if so, do you have a subject in mind? And I wouldn't be surprised if it was Alison Becker after yesterday. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> yeah, the, the great headers of goalkeepers in the last minute by Liverpool players. Um, uh, I forgot the question. You distracted me by talking about Liverpool for a minute. What was the question? Now, I tell you what, what's interesting is to not repeat yourself and to kind of keep pushing the form and pushing it. And so I think the idea, you know, that the industry is changing over the last few years. So I'm going from kind of feature films and singular characters and biogs to the idea of doing a series, which is about lots of amazing people and actually a period of time. It's quite a hard thing to pull off. And I think the team did an amazing job to pull it off. For me, the idea is then, you know, for all of us individually, we're all doing different projects, sometimes together, sometimes not together, is to kind of keep pushing and say, well, what other themes can you do? Um, not all of them work with archive, but this one, it was perfectly done in the form of using archive and in the style of the previous work that we've done. Um, a lot of the artists are not around. You can't interview them now. Or if, they, if you do meet them and talk to them, they won't remember. You know, so it was that perfect balance of incredible footage, amazing music and people who felt they had something to say and wanted to say it and use music as their kind of main form of expression. And all of the politics, all of the stuff that was going on in that year is really why I think this works and why I think it's going to really land with an audience, young and old. No, it's fantastic. I'd be happy if you guys came back in a year and did 1972, to be honest. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching... Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? Indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!